Anybody ever had a dissatisfied customer in this industry? Once. Once. What do you think those people are doing? They've got opinions, and they've got places to voice them. And it's really easy because all they got to do is this. Now, you're going to stop them? Can't. You can't stop them. They're at home. You can't get to them. They're going to do it one way or the other. Your job is to figure out a strategy for how you embrace what it is they say. And you have to look very honestly at the way business is conducted and say, look, there are certain things that happen when you're in the remodeling business, the installation business, the fabrication business, things happen. You know, bad things happen. Jobs don't get done on time. Things are mismeasured. There's lots of things. There's lots of reasons for customers to be angry. It's part of the deal. Now, unfortunately, most of us, because we've been in the business a long time, think what we really need to do is to sweep that under the rug and ignore it. And we don't want to talk about it. Instead, we want to talk about, you know, what, what we do. Can you imagine what the, what the customer's thinking when they're looking for a fabricator, an installer, a kitchen and bath company, somebody, and they go from site to site, and all they read is about people who pride themselves. I always wondered how somebody actually looked when they prided themselves, you know? I pride myself in doing this. We're proud. Everybody's really proud. They must have big, puffy chests. <laughs> it's funny how we talk, you know, and, and how we borrow the language. We look at each other's copy and we sort, of, we sort of borrow it. And what are we trying to say with all of this? You know, when you see these types of expressions, I, I say now with the internet, the rule is, is that if it sounds like an ad, it's bad. Some people write copy because they heard other commercials and they thought, well, that, that's what an ad should sound like, so we should, we should write like that. Now, that was, that was okay once upon a time, but have you used any of these expressions or phrases in your copy, in your sales pitch, in your advertising marketing? What are you trying to say with all of this verbiage? I mean, you wrote it, so you ought to be able to tell me. What are you trying to say? You're good. That we're good. What are you trying to say? Use me. Use me, yes. We're better than anybody else. We're better than anybody else. Here's what I really think you're trying to say, but you won't admit it. We're not crooks. I mean, every one of you, and I've been doing this, I mean, we're going around the country. I must have spoken to, you know, I, I bet I've spoken to 2,000 or more companies across the country, just like yours. And every one of you is competing against that guy who drives a truck and wants to install stuff and knocks on a door. You're all competing against the guy. Say, that guy, he's not licensed, he's not accredited, he's not this, he's not that. I'm better because I'm, you know, what you're really saying is he's cheaper because he's working out of the back of the truck and you don't want to lose the business to him, right? It bugs you when you lose business to a guy who's working out of the back of the truck because the customer doesn't know any better, right? They can't tell the difference. Why? Because all these pieces of stone are just stone. It's a commodity. So if all you're doing, think about this now, if all you're doing is competing, if all of you are competing against the guy who you think is a crook, you're all saying the same thing. We're the best, we have quality, we pride ourselves. What's the customer thinking? I don't know how to tell the difference between you and the other guy. But the guy in the truck is cheaper. I'll go with him because it is a piece of stone and what the heck's the difference? It's a problem, isn't it? Puts you in a box. And that's why so many fabricators don't market because they throw their hands up in the air and say, I don't know what to do. I'm boxed in. I've got this infrastructure. I'm doing it the right way. I train my people. I work hard to make sure that we run a safe shop. And I can't, I can't get the margin that I need to support that infrastructure because the guy in the truck is undercut me. And you're paralyzed. We have to break away from that.